Some people might love roller coasters. Me, I absolutely despise them. Now, you might be thinking, what does that have to do with my Miami preview? Well, plenty. Because if you're a Miami fan, you know what? Your schedule probably looks something like this. Yeah. Started off by winning your first four, but then, yeah, went right down like a roller coaster. Lost your next four. Then it went right back up. One five in a row, and thankfully if you're a Hurricane fan, it didn't go right back down because you closed out the year with that five-game winning streak and a nine and four record. Not bad for Mark Ricks, of course, the longtime Georgia coach who won 74% of his games with Athens, but it wasn't good enough because he was fired at the end of the 2015 season. So year number one, I do think Rick made an impact by winning nine out of thirteen and came off the top fifteen recruiting class this offseason and returns a good chunk of that front seven that was effective in 2016, and on offense will return a very good running back. And that's where we begin with my 2017 Hurricane preview. Running back, he is Mark Walton. He's probably the number one back in the ACC entering this season. Had over 1,100 yards rushing and a whopping 14 touchdowns. Now, so far during the uh, summer workouts, during the August workouts, he's had to deal with a little bit of a uh, injury, got a little bit banged up with the hip. However, uh, Mark Rick said it's nothing serious, so he should be ready to go by the time September rolls around. His backup is Travis Homer, who last year as a freshman saw limited action. Speaking of limited action, how about quarterback? And I have three words when it comes to Miami starting quarterback situation. I don't know. Okay. I don't even think Mark Rick knows right now who the starting quarterback is going to be or the offensive coordinator in Thomas Brown. Do you know who the starting quarterback is going to be for Miami? Yeah, exactly. So right now they've got a slew of players trying to become the number one signal caller. In the most recent um, scrimmage for Miami, probably the one guy who has stuck out the most is Evan Sharif. He really has stuck out. And probably the biggest reason is because he has shown the best ability to hang in the pocket while delivering a strike. In other words, they feel right now he can handle the pressure the best, so Sharif's would be the number one guy most likely entering the season opener. But again, nothing's been named yet, and on his heels, Malik Rogier, a, a redshirt junior. They've got a true freshman in Nikosi Perry in for the running, and this is going to be a familiar name, okay? Cade Weldon. His father, Casey Weldon, was the Heisman Trophy runner-up for Florida State back in 1991. But Cade right now is way down on the depth chart. Absolutely no question, the quarterback position, a major void to fill for the U. Of course, Brett Kaya leaving early for the NFL draft. And that fact at the bottom of the screen says it all. A plethora of Hurricanes selected in this past spring's NFL draft. And you can add um, the wideout Stacey Coley to that list as well. He was drafted. So I think that will mean even more action for Amon Richards, who last season as a freshman dazzled nearly 1,000 yards in receiving yardage and three scores. They also have plenty of experience at the wideout with the senior in Braxton Berrios, who started two games, played all 13, though, and also made an impact returning punts. Expect the same thing this year as far as special teams for Berrios. And then a freshman by the name of Jeff Thomas should make an impact from day one this guy was outstanding in the state of Illinois high school ball last year at East St. Louis. In fact, really shined in the Armor All-American game this past season. So I would expect uh, Jeff Thomas, who's not tall, only 5 feet 10 inches, but is a blazer. So expect him to get some action as well. Offensive line, you lose your only first-round draft pick in David Najoku, who had a whopping eight touchdowns. He was a first-round pick by the Cleveland Browns. So now tied in. Chris Herndon, who did see some action. As a matter of fact, had 28 catches last year for two touchdowns. Left side of the offensive line for the U looks pretty solid. Tyree St. Louis, who started the last eight games of the 2016 season. He's a junior, and he'll play left tackle. Left guard occupied by Trevor Darling, a senior who started in nine games. And at the right guard spot, Casey McDermott, moving from the left side to the right, started all 13 games last year, nine of them at uh, left guard, the other nine at left tackle. But again, we're moving him to the right side. Now, you've got two spots that could be occupied by freshmen, though. At the center spot, uh, Corey Gaynor could be thrown into action right away. That's because the guy that they thought was coming back, Nick Linder, decided that his last year would not be at Miami. He's transferring. And then... At the right tackle position, it looks like it'll be Navon Donaldson's spot. 
6'6", 350, but again, a freshman. If you're curious as to why Miami is the preseason favorite to win the Coastal Division, it might have a little bit to do with that defensive front seven. In fact, I think it has a lot to do with those guys because you return them all. And remember, this defense a year ago only gave up 18 points per game, which was second best in the ACC, and they only allowed 131 yards on the ground per game, which was 26th best in college football out of 130 teams. That's good. So we'll talk about that defensive four. R.J. McIntosh, as a junior, um, should have another fantastic year like he did his sophomore season. Played every game but one and had 42 tackles. His tackle teammate, Kendrick Norton, also a junior, he had 39 tackles and just like McIntosh, had two sacks. Defensive ends are back, and Chad Thomas, entering his senior year, started in 12 games, had four and a half sacks. And how about the freshman year that Joe Jackson had in 2016? Now a sophomore last season had a whopping eight and a half sacks. And talking about the linebackers, all three returned. They had a combined 182 tackles. All three of them, by the way, were freshmen a year ago. So you get to enjoy them this year and next year if you're a Miami fan. Zach McLeod, 37 tackles in 2016. And the leading returning tackler for Miami is Shaq Quarterman, 84 stops. And running out the linebackers, Michael Pinkley with 61 tackles. Not bad. But the secondary definitely needs retool because you lost not one, not two, but three guys to the NFL. You know, Rayshon Jenkins, fourth round, Corn Elder, fifth round, and the seventh round, Adrian Colbert. So that's a lot of bodies you have to replace. The corners, well, these guys have played before, but just not with Miami. One is Javante Dean, a junior, the number one Juco corner in the country, played at uh, Blinn College for a couple of seasons. And Dee Delaney. Gets one year at Miami. That's because you know he's played quite a bit on the FCS level. In fact, was a two-time All-American at the Citadel. Last year had six interceptions for the Citadel Bulldogs. Looking at the safeties, um, probably the most experienced guy would be Jaquan uh, Johnson, a junior. Five starts last year. But did play in all 13 games. Had 38 tackles. He's known as a hitter. And Romeo Finley, whom last year as a freshman saw most of his playing time on special teams. So this would be a transition for him. I would not be surprised, though, if a freshman by the name of Amari Carter gets to play and play quite a bit, just like Johnson, known as a hitter. As far as special teams, probably the top kicker in the ACC and Michael Badgley, whom a year ago, out of 26 kicks, made 21 of them. And it's the next generation of punters from Miami, Zach Fiegels, whose dad, Jeff Fiegels, not only played for the U, but was a 22-year NFL punter. Taking a look at the Miami schedule, should start off 2-0, but then September the 16th, you got to play Florida State early this time, and you have to play them on the road. Last year's game at Miami, Hurricanes got off to a good start, but the second half, they fizzled out. FSU prevailed. But this is a big reason why I think Miami's one total is going to be high. Look at October 12th through November the 18th. That six-game stretch, five of those games are at home, a tremendous advantage, especially when Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech are projected to be your toughest opponents from the Coastal Division. You get them both at Coral Gables. And in a non-conference game, Notre Dame, you get them at home as well. So that's a big break, too. Vegas says that Miami will win nine games. I'm actually predicting ten. Look, I think that front seven of Miami, which was good last year, with another year of experience, will be even better. I love the way their schedule looks, and I like the ground attack. Obviously, the concerns, they need more proven wideouts besides Richards, and, of course, the quarterback position and the secondary right now are a little bit on the dicey side. But still, it's a good enough team to get to double digits and wins and win the Coastal Division, and I think it'll be a rematch at the end of the year for the ACC title between the U and Florida State. On my college football playoff preview show, which will be August 30th, find out who I have picked to win the ACC. That's my look at the U. We'll see you later.